Welcome back to Illness Grips Pencast. Today we will discuss Legionnaire's disease, or Legionella pneumonia. This disease was initially discovered and made famous in the 1970s when an outbreak occurred in an American Legion convention. Legionella has recently been in the news in New York, where an outbreak has been spreading and just recently localized to a cooling tower in the Bronx. Legionnaires has always been a favorite topic on the boards and on rounds, as it is one of the few causes of pneumonia that has some components of its presentation and findings that can differentiate it from other causes of pneumonia. Let's look at what predisposes one to Legionnaires. Legionella pneumonia occurs more often in elderly men who smoke and who drink alcohol. As already mentioned, the disease is often spread through contaminated water systems, such as in hotels or in hospitals or any sort of large cooling towers. Unfortunately, other than the cooling towers, none of these are terribly specific for Legionella. How will your patient present? The vast majority of these patients will have cough, often dry but occasionally productive, fever, and dyspnea. If you are underwhelmed, you should be, as these are essentially the clinical criteria by which we diagnose all pneumonia. However, what can tip you towards Legionella is when the patient also notes diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and sometimes abdominal pain. To be fair, abdominal pain can be seen in pneumonia, other types of pneumonia, due to referred pain from lower lobe pneumonia's juxtaposition to the diaphragm, but remember what I said in the first video about board exams. They are obligated to present classic presentation diseases with very few exceptions. When you examine these patients, you will hear crackles, egophony, and tactile fremitus. Again, all findings that suggest consolidation that is typical of many causes of pneumonia. An interesting finding that is more specific for Legionella is relative bradycardia. Traditionally, we would expect a 10 beats per minute rise in the heart rate for every degree's rise in temperature in Fahrenheit. When this expected rise does not occur, however, it is termed relative bradycardia. Other notable diseases in which relative bradycardia have been described include Q fever and typhoid fever. What's more important to note, however, is that mycoplasma pneumonia, often competing on the differential with Legionnaire's disease, does not have relative bradycardia. Labs classically will include hyponatremia, which is due to SIDH, or syndrome of inappropriate ADH. Again, in reality, you can see similar hyponatremia and other types of pneumonia because most processes that cause pulmonary inflammation have the potential to cause an inappropriate rise in ADH. However, this finding is part of the classic description for Legionnaire's disease. Other more obvious findings would include a positive urine antigen for Legionella and, of course, a positive culture. Neither will likely be provided unless the question asks what the next step in diagnosis of Legionnaires would be, of course. Lastly, imaging will not be specific, but often includes a multifocal pneumonia. Thus, taking all of this together, an ideal illness script for Legionnaires disease could read, A 65-year-old male smoker with current alcohol abuse and diabetes who is a resident at a long-term care facility presents with fever, cough, abdominal pain, and diarrhea with finding of relative bradycardia, crackles on exam, hyponatremia, and multifocal pneumonia on chest x-ray with a positive urine Legionella antigen. Again, neither the boards or real life will give you this entire presentation, but the closer the patient's presentation to this illness script, the higher your pretest probability for Legionnaire's disease will be, and the lower your threshold for treating with high doses of thromycin, even before confirmatory testing is obtained. Thank you so much for listening. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel to get more videos. I encourage you to submit comments on how to improve the channel, as well as suggestions for future videos. Until next time.